Hello, it's me again, Jen from Cake Tastic Cakes. I'm going to show you today how to make a tractor, a John Deere tractor, a 3D one out of gum paste. 100% edible, very cool. So if you like, please like it, please subscribe, and we can get going. All right, you start out with a wad of green. It's got to be that nice bright green that John Deere does all their tractors and their colors in. So what you do is you make it kind of like an oval. And I'm using my two fondant smoothers and I'm pressing off eh, over halfway of it to kind of make it long and angular, as you can see here. And leave the butt end of it sticking out, that's fine. We'll fix that later. I trim off the edge in the front, just tip it off just to make it a little more flat. And that's gonna become the front part of the tractor where the engine and the motor is. The back part is gonna be where the person sits. This is gonna be an open cab tractor. We're not gonna have a roof on this one. Using my cake spreader again, I press down on that blob in the back, and so now it kind of looks like a mushroom. Yeah, we'll say it's a mushroom. <laughs> and um, when you press down in the back, you're gonna see the front is gonna pudge out a little bit, so you gotta reshape it as you go. Now the engine part of the tractor sits higher than where the person will sit, the cab part. So that's why I'm trying to keep the front part pooched up a little bit more and the bottom part lower. Uh, once you have it at a good height, then you're going to trim it off and square off the back end. And that just makes sense because tractors are nice and square in the back. <laughs> All right. Make sure your two sides are pretty even. Make sure your back is a good size. Trim it off. Shape it off. Do what you have to do. That wasn't good enough, so I'm going to do it again. And what you guys didn't see is this was like attempt number three because I had never made a 3D tractor before. So I was just trying to figure out what the heck I was even doing. So yeah, you're welcome. Magic of editing again. All right, I am going to put pressure marks, kind of indent the front of the motor part, the engine part, where the grill is going to be and where the two, I don't know what you call them, but they're like um, where the tractor can kind of breathe, <laughs> you know, like the air parts on the sides and just mark it off on the side. There's going to be two lines on the side. I just nipped off the front because we're going to put black there and you don't want it to stick out. And you can see it wraps around the tractor and it comes up at an angle like that. So just imagine that it's on the other side exactly the same. And then you'll have a very good idea of how the tractor looks on both sides. Okay, and then I'm doing two, you can't see through my hand, if I move my hand, there you go, just two little lines. Those are also on each side, it's also more part of the grill, I don't know if it's design, I don't know. Anyway, roll out your black nice and thin, that's going to become the grill of the tractor. And I just held it up and kind of pushed on it to mark it off, this is my guess. I trimmed it a little bit because I... Picked it up and put it down a few times, and I'm pretty sure I edited that out because it's boring to see me have to lay it down and retrim it. Yep, I just pretended like it was perfect the first time. And I expect everyone out there to do the same. <laughs> just pretend it was perfect the first time. It makes for better videos. Now a little bit of water on either side as well. Just like I said before, the two marks are also on the other side. It looks the same on both sides. Just roll out your black nice and thin and using my shaping tool, just press it into place and just kind of flatten it down. I'm just doing it very carefully so I don't accidentally push the whole thing right out of the way. And yeah, there you go. They kind of remind me of Jimmy's. So all of you people out there from Philly area who know what Jimmy's are, yeah, shout out. Anyway. What you do on the one side, do on the other, and then we're moving on. All right, you can't have your John Deere tractor without your bright yellow as well, because you want people to notice you spent your money on that John Deere tractor. These are gonna become the two stripes that go on either side of the, I guess it's the hood of the tractor. Um, it, they don't go on top, they go more down to the side and they kind of taper. You can see it's pointed there in the front. So just roll out your yellow really thin, just Put a couple little thin stripes, have it tapered down at the bottom, and trim it till it gets to the edge of where the cab is going to sit. So that's what I did there. I'm just using my knife blade to, in theory, make it straighter. See? Look at that. Straight. And don't forget to put your yellow stripe on the other side of the cab. Once again, I'm not going to bother showing you because you already saw how it's done, and I'm pretty sure you people can make a stripe if you need to. 
Okay, we're gonna start working on the cab now. This is gray, just plain old gray. I have a whole bunch of square cutters and um, I'm just using one of them that matches up the inside pretty well. We're gonna outline it with green, so don't go all the way to the edges. And just pat it into place with a little bit of water. You want it to be, you want it to be pretty thin. This is gonna be the seat. It's also gray. I just made a circle and then smooshed it together to make it more ovally, but very flat on the two sides, as you can see there. And then just kind of fold it in half, as you see right there. Yes, there you go, fold it in half. And when I stuck it on there, I realized it wasn't tall enough, so now I just rolled out some more gray. It's a little bit thicker than before. And I'm going to make it into like um, a bench under the seat, which it actually should have anyway. So there you go. Now we've got it looking better. All right, getting out our bright green again. We're going to work on the walls that go around the edge of the tractor here. I took two pieces of green and you cut them out into a square. And now I'm using my circle cutter to create an arch because the cabs, the walls, the cabs curve up to kind of mimic the tires, how the tire well will fit. So that's what I was trying to do here. Um, I just flipped the one that I cut and laid it across the other so they'd be the same size. But make sure you turn it over or you're gonna have two of the same side and you don't want that. You want a right and a left side. And I held it up, it was a little too tall, so I just trim some off, make it a good height. And that's all this really is. It kind of doesn't matter too much how big your circle is that you cut out because you can just trim it down to whatever size you need that fits. The original square, I want to say, fit the side of the tractor properly. And a little bit of water, press it into place, and voila, there you go. Now I'm going to do the back part of the cab. So I found a square cutter that fits between the two side pieces there. Cut it out, trim it to the size that looks like it will fit appropriately. And I want to, yeah, I think again, I trimmed it again when you guys weren't looking. That's that extra piece in the back there. And then just fit it in. There you go. A little bit of water. Smush it into place. I see this a lot. Okay. I'm going to make a little steering wheel now. I cut out some black. It's maybe a quarter inch thick. I'm not really sure. Just whatever looks good. I put a little dot of black in there because it didn't look right sitting flat against the front panel part. This way it sticks out a little bit. And yeah, just press it into place, that's it. All right, now I'm measuring out the tires. The tractor tires has a really big one on the back and a smaller one in the front. If you have a set of biscuit cutters like I do, they're two sizes different if that helps you out. Roll your black out a quarter of an inch thick. The tack tire tractor, uh, tractor tires are really thick and technically should have been thicker, but when I made it thicker, it just didn't look right. So I went with um, a half inch thickness here. And I'm using my cutter, the smaller one, to mark out the center because we're going to hollow them out. And you don't want to just go for it blind. You want to mark it out and see where it's going to sit so it looks like it's an even thickness all around. And I'm putting the big one back on the outside of it because when you press down like this, it forces the gum paste out. And this way, my, uh, my bigger cookie cutter or biscuit cutter is keeping the shape straight up and down so it's not going to flare out or anything. It holds its shape better. All right, so there you go. Now we're going to work on the tire. Um, the tire is going to be full of yellow. So what I'm doing, it's got two, if you look at a tractor a picture of it, which I'm sure you'll do, um, you're going to see two rings of metal, yellow metal. One is the same width of the tire. That's what I'm doing here. And then there's going to be a smaller one that's slightly shorter. And then you have like the center hub cap. I don't know what you call it. The part that attaches to the tire and the axle. So we're starting with the outside ring. It is the same width of the tire. Like I said before, just roll it out the same thickness, lay it in there with some water and then use your tool, smooth it out. So it stays nice and round. You don't accidentally misshape in your tire. So that was our one back tire. Here's our other back tire, the same thing. It's going to be the same thickness, the thickness of the tire. Oh, I'm sorry, uniform thickness for the piece of yellow you put in there as best you can. I use those little sticks that you get from like Lowe's or Home Depot that you stir paint with because they work great as a measuring tool to keep everything the same thickness. Trim off the extra, just like that. Perfectly done. And then voila, with the magic of editing, I did it perfectly and it's done. 
Yeah, this thing took me hours to do, so don't feel bad. Like I said, I also started over a few times, and I made the tires a couple times. So you're, you're all witnessing the fruit of my labor here. All right, here is the smaller inner ring that I was talking about before. We're going to line it twice. It's the same thickness as the one on the outside, but you want it to sit a little lower. You can see it here in, in this angle. If I'd move my hand, yep, there we go. You can see how it sits lower inside, and that's what you're doing. I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. Roll it out, put it in place. Just make sure it's, um, I don't know, you know, a quarter of the way lower than the original piece. Now we're going to fill it in. Okay, this is the same thickness as the other pieces. Don't worry if, you know, you can't make it too, as long as it's smaller than the center ring, then you're, you're good. You want it to be a little bit meaty because it does have to support weight. So I just found a circle that was super close, filled it in. There you go. And I'm putting a hole. This hole goes all the way through, guys, so make sure you go all the way through. I'm using a lollipop stick. You can get them anywhere, any type of craft or candy store. They're ubiquitous, so don't worry about having a hard time finding those. That's going to be our axle, so that's why I'm using that size. Just reference point there. Okay, now I'm making the front tires. Yes, the tires just never end. Same thing as before. I had it marked out. Press it down while keeping that one on the outside so it doesn't get all poochy or mushy or whatever you want to call it. Push out the centers, and there you go, smaller tires. These are smaller than the front. Don't forget that. They have to be smaller than the front. Okay, these look horribly wobbly and everything, but it they clean up, <laughs> so don't worry. You line them with the two layers of yellow on the inside, just like you did the back tires. Uh, the one is smaller in the center, just like before, and then circles. You can see these circles don't quite match up, but that's fine because you just press on them until the edges touch. And just like before, as centered as you can, press your lollipop stick or whatever you're going to use for an axle. I know some people use wooden dowels or whatever. Whatever you're going to use, mark it off. Push it through. Okay, here is some more black. This is going to be the super fun part that made me want to gouge my eyes out, honestly, because it was so monotonous. It's the tire tread. Yay! In order for a tractor tire to look nice and tractor tirey, you got to have big chunky tread on it. So, rolled it out, a mm, quarter of an inch thick, maybe not even, and start cutting little same size rectangles. These rectangles, you can see I'm staggering them as I'm placing them on. They stick out to the sides. You want that, okay? Look how nice it is when it's all done. I'm going to show you how I did that, though. Once you layer them all around, let them harden. That's important. Let them harden a little bit. Stand it upright, and then using your knife, just like I'm doing here, lay it against the side of your tire and just cut straight down. You have to have that piece that you're cutting against the board or glass or whatever you use. Otherwise, you're going to just rip it right off, and you just trim, trim, trim all around. I tried trimming it when it was soft and then placing it on, and it looked mushy and it didn't look right, so this is the better way to go, guys. So, yeah, um, these little things are also... I think partly evil because they fall off your tires all the time. So you got to really be generous with that water, getting them to stay on there. All right, these are going to be the axles. I, uh, we're coming back to that. It's a lollipop stick. It's eight inches long. I cut it pretty much in half. I had to fix it a little, but it doesn't matter. The tractor tire positioning is important, though. The tires line up with each other. The front and back tires are in line with each other from the picture I used. I don't know. You know, you don't argue with me on that one. The picture I used. And they are the same width. You see how it sits close to the cab on the back, but then they stick out in the front. All right? So that's important. Oh, shoot. Also, what's important is watch your left and right back and front tire. You're going to want the tread to be pointing like an arrow down at the ground in the direction it's going. If you do all your tire treads in the same direction, you're going to end up with tires looking like they got put on backwards and it will make you cry and have to pick all the pieces off and redo it. So, yeah, not, not from experience or anything there, folks. All right, we're making the axles. Back to the axles. I just threaded it with some green, rolled it out, pinched it off, trimmed it off, basically made it thin-ish and uniform, okay? Then you're going to stick it through your tire, kind of press it into place, Mush, mush, mush. It doesn't have to be beautiful. People typically aren't going to examine it that closely in that area. And then on the outside, you just take a ball of yellow and cap off that white. And a little green came through there, but I get it off later, so don't worry. 
but that's important. That's going to really stabilize the tire. You're going to want it soft green, that soft, see it's still mushy on the inside, and then the soft yellow on the outside. Water it up, stick it together, balance them carefully, and then put them aside. We're going to make this thing in three pieces, so it all has a chance to dry and harden and stay its shape by itself. It makes it a whole lot easier to work with. So here you can really see what I did. I kind of smooshed it, roll it around, pinch off that extra, and then trim it off. In order to get rid of that edge, you can roll it with your fondant roller like I'm doing. Use your hands and just smooth it if you're good like that. I tend to not be so good like that. But yeah, so there you go. And the same thing. These are the back tires. Again, watch the direction of the tread. Okay, you want to be careful. And, oh, actually, yeah, because I'm like, wait a minute, that's a small tire sitting there. What I did was I stuck it into one tire, capped off the side with yellow, and then let them harden a little bit before I added the other tire. So that way it was even more stable. So, pro tip right there, yeah, that I totally didn't forget about until just now. Can I just tell you what a pain this video was to make? Because, uh, yeah, my computer crashed, and I had the first video, which is again about 25 minutes all done all edited ready to go lost everything and this thing literally took me two days to crop and edit and voice and oh my gosh I seriously wanted to cry so yeah please like and subscribe <laughs> it soothes my frustration levels all right same idea as before uh, with this thread it through the big tire stand it up nice and straight mush it down a little bit cap it with the yellow once it's hardened enough um, then you're going to add the other tire to the other side and same thing just thread it through add your water cap it with the yellow and it actually it looks pretty good I, I gotta say I was pleased with how this one came out and then just put it aside let it harden you're not going to touch these anymore so once you get them you see the treads go in the right way for the tractor tires be careful of that please don't be like me do it right the first time take my advice here all right cap it off and then put them aside just Put them aside, let them dry. Okay, I'm going to make a little axle well here where it's going to sit on top of the axle, the cab of the, of the tractor. All I did was cut out a triangle, basically, like slicing a piece of cake. Because this part was a piece of cake, literally. Ha ha ha. Oh, a piece of gum paste. Again. All right, I'll stop. Anyway, so there you go. That's just what's going to sit on the axle. And the, where the axle sits, it's going to line up with the curve of the cab with the tire. So make sure you have it in the right position. Line it up, take a look at it, and line it up. This is going to be the roll bar, I guess it is, on the tractor. Because we don't have a closed cab, so it has that safety bar thing. Because so I guess tractors are made for totally off-roading. I took an 8-inch lollipop stick, bent it twice. As you can see, to make kind of like a squared off U shape there, roll it with gum paste, um, try to make it as even as you can. This is not my best work and it's honestly a little embarrassing, but I didn't get a better shot of it. So there you go. So yes, and it'll sit inside the cab on either side of the seat, as you can see there, and just press it on into place and the black will hold it right where it belongs. This is going to be the exhaust pipe that comes up out of the top of the tractor. It's, once again, just a little piece of black that I rolled thin, and then I left the top on and just kind of mushed it and pinched it to, to the side to make that little flap cap thing that keeps the rain out, I guess, or birds, or I don't know what it's for. I'm not a farmer, okay? So that's what I am doing here, just trying to make it nice and round and smoothed off. I did much better with that one. Make your little flap cap part and trim off the bottom so it's nice and flat because you don't want it to have a pooch or a smush at the bottom there. You want it to sit nicely. I put a little mark on top and then using a different lollipop stick, I press down into it so that this will just slide right on in. See that? Isn't that awesome? A little bit of water holds it all in place. And this will take a couple of days to dry. And if you're going to put it on top of a cake, beware, because the size I made, oh, I want to say it was maybe four or five inches in length. It's heavy. This is a heavy, solid piece, and it will sink into buttercream icing. If you're going to be using this on top without any fondant or anything like that, if you don't refrigerate your cakes, you're going to want to put a cake plate under it with some support, and, just, and then buttercream on top of it. So there you go. Another little tip for you. I'm just full of info. 
This is just another little detail touch, just a rolled out piece of green, nice and thin, goes straight down the top of the hood. I'm calling it the hood. This is just a little piece to accent off the front of it to separate the cab from the front a little bit more because it was just kind of looking like it's floating there. And I had to lift up the steering wheel. I used my knife to trim off the edges and straighten it out a bit. So it looks a whole lot better this time around. <laughs> See, straighten that out, would you? There you go. And don't forget the other side. There we go. And I did bring it out all the way to the edge of the cab. And you see there is a little space between the side of the cab and the, the hood, <laughs> I guess, just to simulate where you'd step in. This is really thin white that I rolled out. And I'm using a very small cutter just to make a couple semicircles. These are going to be the headlights for the tractor because I realized I don't have any lights on there. So yeah, make sure they're the same size. I had to trim the one because it was a little bit bigger. And then wrap it around the side. As you can see, it goes around the side a little bit and then across the front. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes. So don't worry about that. All right. Okay, we are cutting more green. This is going back to the tires. The axle should have had a, have had a nice amount of time to solidify. And this is important. You can't skip this part. This goes on the front tires. Because of the height of the tires being so big in the back and so small in the front, if you just put your tractor on top, it's going to look like it's plowing down into the earth. There is a lift on the front axle that raises the front of the tractor up so that it sits the same height, even though the tractor tires are different sizes. All right, so that's what this is right here. I just cut out a thick rectangle. I set the tractor on top of the tires a few times just to get the idea of how thick I needed it to be. So you can see that right there. And then I rolled it out, cut it out, stick it on. And once again, make sure it's level, whatever, where, however your tires sit the nicest, that's going to be the bottom. That's your level part. And you go from there. <laughs> okay. So make sure it's nice and level and here, check it out. You can see it sits nice and flat. Yes, it does. Good job, Jennifer. Why? Thank you, Jennifer. Okay. This is going to be the fenders, I guess, that cover the back tires. Roll out your green, about a quarter of an inch, make a nice clean rectangle out of it. There's no secret way to do this properly. Um, just be aware that it doesn't cover the whole tire. It doesn't go all the way around the back or anything. It sits maybe hmm, a third of the way around the tire, but it favors the front. So when you place it with a little bit of water, I, again, I did this in three pieces, so I glued it, glued it. I adhered it with water to the tires, not the bed or the body of the tractor itself. And you can see I have it coming forward quite a bit there. So it comes up around to the top of the cab, but it doesn't really go any further than that. And I measured it out so it's even on both sides. Alrighty. Now for a few little final details. I'm just putting a couple little black lines with my edible food coloring marker. And I'm also going to write the word deer on the yellow in black because that's what they do. They have deer written on them. And make sure you spell it properly. It's not John Deere type deer. Oh, wait. It... Okay. <laughs> D-E-E-R-E. -E. There you go. I'm thinking Dear John letters. <laughs> not John Deere. I said John Deere too many times. Okay. And even though it faces the wrong way, you got to write it out on the other side as well. And once you have that, you're done. You've got your John Deere tractor. Yes. Please check out my other videos. Please like and subscribe. I've got other farm videos. I've got farm animals. Make sure you check them out. And thank you very much. Bye.